Hey, Steve Wilson here. A quick run through incorporating your company. So if you're raising money under SES or EAS, you've obviously got to have a company. It only applies to uh, limited companies. So uh, there are loads of uh, formation agents out there. It doesn't need anything fancy at all. I mean, you can do them for like as little as sort of 10, 15 pounds. And, and that's for the sort of key theme here. When you're setting up your company for the SES or EAS reliefs, you want to keep it as straightforward as possible. It's kind of like a pre-seed round. Um, so, so any of the normal kind of suspects are fine. I'll put a list uh, in the comments, potential providers, uh, but don't worry too much about anything fancy. In terms of the number of shares to issue at the start, um, it's typically say you might have 100 one pound shares or you might have 100 one penny shares. Um, I'll come and say, say make sure they're ordinary shares. Uh, but the, the point here is you know, don't go wild in terms of numbers and the total nominal value because the, the point here is you're on the hook for this this is your limited liability so when you set up the company as a founder you're the first person maybe as a group of you um, but if you think about it 100 one pound shares 100 times one means uh, you're liable for 100 pound that's your kind of uh, your just sort of general liability sometimes if you'll go oh i want loads of shares i'll come to that minute you want lots of liquidity liquidity in numbers to the number of shares I'm going to set up 100,000 one pound shares. That just means you've created a 100,000 pound sort of liability for yourself that you uh, need to um, be able to put into company at some stage. And if anything went wrong, that's what you're liable for personally. So you don't want to get on that. You want to you know the point of having a company is it sort of protects you. Uh, so you want to, if you're going to have 100,000 shares, you make sure that it's up, you know, it's fractions of a penny per share. So your, your total liability is never more than, say, 100 quid. Okay, got that point, fine. I should say as well, there's a separate video you'll see uh, I've got in the uh, Founder HQ getting funded section. I've got a separate video there that talks about getting a share capital right, but so we're kind of skimming through this now. Must be ordinary shares, nothing preferential, just have ordinary shares with you know, one vote, um, uh, right to dividends, no preferential right to dividends, no preferential rights to your assets on a winding up, just plain standard, boring, bog standard ordinary shares all you want ideally i say again you've seen the that other video i've put before you want 100,000 ideally to be able to give you the sort of baseline liquidity to be able to get to the numbers you want to get to uh, because how it works in terms of um ss and you have to issue new shares to the investors so you get diluted uh, you don't sell any of your existing shareholders and you create new ones so that if you're able to give like five percent to somebody you need to have a baseline of say 100,000 so to get the fractions to work, the percentages to work. I'll give some other examples in the other video to have a look at, but just get, get the sort of principle there as the main thing. So, so if you start off with say 100 one pound shares, or you start off with um, 100,000 penny shares, what we can end up doing is subdividing them to get to 100,000 shares. So in this case here, say if you've got 100 one pound shares, subdivide them into 100,000 0.001 penny shares to get you to the same numbers. You're still on the hook for 100 pounds worth of total nominal share capital, but you've got the 100,000 chips in terms of shares. Don't bother with alphabet shares at this point. You know, don't have A, B, C, D, E shares. I mean, you can do that further in line and, and when you get to kind of more um, sort of rigid formal uh, VC type private equity funding, they will want probably these different classes of shares. You can get to that later on, do that later. Don't worry about this now, I wouldn't go there. I had a you kind of client recently and we were sort of laughing about how he sort of set up with uh, loads of alphabet shares and it's kind of we say you've got the ferrari at the moment you can get to that you just want to start off with a kind of a, a bog standard ford fiesta at this stage just get to where you need to get to get that initial cash in you can pretty much keep the model articles i mean again they will be shredded up and redone when you get further down the line in terms of more substantial investment but for now they're fine um, <clears throat> Unlikely that you can qualify for SAS as the one of the founders, and the principal reason for that is the fact that you've got this 30% rule. You can't have a, no, you can, a, an SEIS or an EIS investor can never have more than 30% of the issued share capital. So, um, you know, if you're the sole founder, you've breached it day one, you scuppered, and that's fine. And in most cases, founders aren't expecting to get it. I have done it a few times where I've got it to work where you've got like a group of four or five people who are founding the company together. And you can make the numbers work there, so you have it 25% each, and therefore you know you're under 30 percent can work. A few hoops jump through, proceed with caution, but it can work in principle. Keep it simple. That's the name of the game here. Um, so bog standard company incorporated, um, 
So just ordinary shares, say 100 open shares to start with. If you can make it work to get 100,000 0.001 shares on day one, if you can not have fat fingers setting up, fine, but otherwise we can subdivide the shares if it comes to it, or your accountants can do that for you. Um, but that's all you need to get yourself started. I hope that's helpful.